At some point, the cold becomes something else entirely, the kind that bites through fur, through hide, through bone. Out there on a frozen fjord night, with the oil lamp flickering weakly, the Vikings faced it and didn't flinch. No electricity, no coal, no modern fire, just wind, smoke, and the stubborn creativity of human survival. When the temperature dropped to 20 below zero Fahrenheit, the longhouse groaned under the storm frost, crawling across its walls like living veins. Yet inside, people laughed, ate, slept, warm. They didn't beat the cold with machines, they outsmarted it. They turned the world itself into insulation and warmth into an art. How? That's the secret we're uncovering tonight and how you can still do it even now. Inside, a Viking longhouse warmth wasn't a luxury, it was survival. A 60-foot hall walls stuffed with turf, one open fire burning at the center. Archaeologists in Borg, Norway found something strange above the rafters, a black layer of soot thick as a blanket. That wasn't neglect, that was the system. No chimney, no vents, just a small hole at the roof's peak angled to breathe, too open and the heat vanished into the night sky, too tight and the smoke suffocated the sleepers. But when the balance was right, the magic happened. Smoke lingered just below the roof, forming a thin invisible ceiling of trapped warmth. Air stayed at 60 degrees while the world outside froze at 20 below zero Fahrenheit. They didn't fear smoke, they listened to it. They learned to use it. The longhouse became a living thermal engine recycling every breath of heat. Today, here's how you can do it. Hang a ceiling, baffle two to three feet above your wood stove. A board, a metal sheet, or thick canvas will do. Let warm air collect under it before drifting sideways. That heat trap lowers your ceiling temperature gradient and keeps warmth where you actually live near the floor. Add a small vent behind the stove for airflow and you'll burn up to 30% less wood while feeling a steadier, gentler heat. You don't need gadgets. You need understanding. And once you feel that still, even warmth, the kind that fills a room quietly like breath, you'll realize something simple. The Vikings didn't heat their homes harder. They heated them smarter. Still works. When the wind cuts through the fjord, it doesn't care what you wear. It bites. It searches. It finds the seams where warmth leaks away. The Vikings learned early the secret wasn't thicker hides or heavier coats. It was the air itself. At Hedeby, archaeologists found fragments of finely combed wool, dense yet springy, each strand holding thousands of tiny air pockets. That's what kept them alive. Those pockets weren't decoration, they were insulation cells. At 20 below zero, Fahrenheit wool held its warmth because the air inside couldn't move. And still air means still heat. They didn't fight the cold, they trapped it on their own terms. Today. You can rebuild the same system. Start with a wool base layer merino if you can, any wool if you can't. It keeps moisture away from your skin. Add a fleece or felt mid-layer to trap air. That's your thermal buffer. Then finish with a waxed canvas or leather shell to block the wind. Three layers, three jobs, wick trap shield. Don't worry about brands or fancy labels. This is physics, not fashion. Each layer holds still air, and that's what saves energy. Studies show proper layering can cut heat loss by up to 25% even when wet. That's warmth, science can prove, and your body can feel. Try it once. You'll notice it within minutes. Your core stays steady. Your hands thaw faster. Your breath feels lighter. You'll use less firewood, sleep better, think clearer. The Vikings didn't wait for modern gear. They discovered the physics of warmth by touch, by instinct, by survival. Still works. Still genius. When the fire fades, silence takes over. And with it, the cold. It creeps across the floor, pulling the warmth out of everything it touches. Wood wool, even breath. At Ribe, archaeologists found blackened stone hollows beside Viking beds not from cooking, but from heating. Those stones had been charged by the hearth, then tucked under hides and blankets. They called it comfort. We'd call it thermal storage. The idea was simple turn rock into a battery. 
granite basalt, both dense, both slow to lose heat. Once warmed to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, a single stone could hold that warmth for six, even eight hours, long enough to outlast the night. Today, you can still use that same science. Place a few fire bricks or basalt rocks around your wood stove. Let them heat for an hour or two until too hot to touch. Then with tongs or thick gloves, wrap them in a wool blanket or a layer of canvas. That's your thermal capsule. Set it near your bed or under a chair. No flame, no smoke, just steady radiant heat that warms the air quietly. You'll wake before dawn and feel it. The air still gentle, the floor not biting cold. No sparks, no cords, no lithium, just stone and knowledge. Tests show this trick keeps small cabins 8 to 10 degrees warmer through the night using no extra wood. And once you try it, you'll understand the stone doesn't just store heat, it stores time. Nine centuries later, engineers call it thermal mass, the same principle behind rocket mass heaters and modern earthen walls. They discovered it by accident. We rediscover it by need. Still works. Still warm. Beneath every Viking bed, there was more than dirt. At Jorvik and Lofoten, archaeologists uncovered layers of peat and straw, nearly eight inches thick, dark, springy, and carefully packed under sleeping platforms. It looks simple, but it was thermal genius. Frozen ground acts like a sponge. It sucks heat straight out of the body through the floor. The Vikings learned that the real battle wasn't above them, but beneath them. So they built a living floor. When peat dries, it traps thousands of tiny air pockets like natural foam. It insulates. It breathes. It even absorbs moisture from breath and sweat keeping the air inside the house dry enough for fire to burn clean. Imagine lying down on that floor. No wood boards, no blankets, yet just that soft earthy cushion under your back and warmth rising slow from below. Today, you can still build the same comfort. Lay down a base of peat moss or straw pellets at least eight inches deep. Spread it evenly. Let it stay loose. That's what holds the air. Cover it with a cotton or wool mat. Nothing plastic, nothing sealed. You've just built your own thermal buffer. This setup can lift your cabin or tent floor temperature by about 15 degrees. Fahrenheit enough to turn a frozen night into real sleep. No wires, no gas, no noise. Just nature doing what it's always done. You'll feel it by morning. The cold no longer climbs up your legs. The floor feels alive, springy, breathing, gentle, not magic, physics. In blackouts, off-grid cabins, or winter camps, this is a small act of survival that still works today. And centuries later, architects are returning to it in eco-floor compost systems and earth-berm homes that breathe with the land. They didn't just sleep on the earth, they listened to it. Still works, still warm. In the far northern coast of Norway, the nights were endless. The wind screamed through the cracks of every wall, and yet a small stone bowl glowed quietly in the dark. Archaeologists at Naustal found soot stains on walls and soapstone fragments shaped like shallow cups. They weren't decorations. They were life support. Inside those bowls, the Vikings burned seal oil, sometimes fish oil anything that could burn slow and steady. Each lamp gave off just enough about 150 to 200 BTUs per hour, a thin golden light that also warmed two people through the long Arctic night. Tiny flame, enormous meaning. They didn't waste energy, they merged it. One flame for sight and for warmth. Today you can bring that wisdom back. Take a vegetable oil or olive oil lamp or even a simple steel cup with a cotton wick. Set it inside a soapstone clay or metal base to hold and reflect heat. Use a wick trim short half an inch above the oil to keep it smokeless. Let it burn for hours. The light stays soft, the heat stays constant, and the air stays clean. You'll notice it after 10 minutes, the air near your hands turns mild. The room feels less empty. It's not a furnace. It's not supposed to be. It's presence. It's home.
Tests show one small lamp can raise air temperature in a closed tent or cabin corner by 8 to 10 degrees, just enough to take the edge off frostbite. No cords, no gas, no noise. The Vikings didn't fight the dark. They fed it just enough fire to live. And you can still do the same tonight, even off-grid, even in a blackout. A small flame, a calm heart, still works still warm. On the Icelandic plains, winter didn't visit, it stayed. So the Vikings built their homes not against nature, but with it. Each longhouse stood wrapped in walls of turf, stacked sods, each one weighing nearly 300 kilograms per square meter. To the untrained eye, it was just dirt and grass. To them, it was survival. Wood alone couldn't stop the Arctic wind. It howled through every seam. But turf, wet and alive, trapped both moisture and air in alternating layers. That made it breathe. That made it warm. The walls didn't seal the cold out. They absorbed it, then gave back steady, gentle heat. They called it the living wall. And they were right. Today, you can build the same principle without a single sod. Start with a double wall system outer shell made of compressed straw board or earth bags. These mimic the turf's dense moisture regulating mass. Inside, add a linen or hemp vapor barrier. It keeps the air breathable but blocks drafts. Finally, seal the inner wall with clay plaster or wood paneling. You've just built a wall that breathes, insulates, and balances humidity. No plastic, no fiberglass, no electricity. In tests, this kind of wall keeps indoor temperature 10 to 12 degvavurth more stable even through sub-zero nights. It doesn't sweat. It doesn't rot. It just works. Step back for a moment. You've built warmth the old way, the quiet way. Today's green roof cabins and earth-sheltered homes are the direct descendants of these turf walls' different tools. Same wisdom. Nature was the first insulation engineer, and the Vikings knew how to listen, still works, still warm. In the burial chamber of Oseberg, archaeologists found wool dark and oily touched by smoke. It wasn't ruined, it was engineered. The Vikings hung their blankets near the hearth, letting thin curls of smoke rise through the fibers. Over days, the wool absorbed oil from the air animal fatwood tar and a faint film of ash settled between each strand. That wasn't dirt. That was armor. Moisture kills heat faster than the wind ever could. But smoke-seasoned wool absorbed 30% less water than clean wool. That meant dry nights, lighter blankets, and warmth that clung even when the fire died. They didn't wash away the smoke. They wore it. Today, you can still do the same safely, simply, and off-grid. Hang your wool blanket near a wood stove or campfire, not over the flame, but within the warm smoke plume. Let it dry for an hour. Repeat weekly in winter. The fibers take on a thin coat of natural oil, lanolin reborn, forming a barrier that repels damp air and mildew. If you live in an apartment or cabin, you can mimic it. Light a small incense burner or smoke pot beneath the hanging wool, then brush in a teaspoon of olive or lanolin oil afterward. That's all. No chemicals, no electricity, just knowledge. After a few weeks, your blanket smells faintly of firewood and stays warm even in mist and fog. Modern tests confirm it treated wool dries 40% faster and stays 10 degrees or warmer to the touch. Smoke Oil Ash, the first waterproofing trio. They didn't fight the weather they wove with it. And if you try it tonight, you'll feel what they felt. The quiet heat, the pulse of life in fabric, still works, still warm. The embers fade, the longhouse grows quiet, only a thin wisp of warmth rises from the hearth, soft as breath light as memory. From smokestone grass and hide, the Vikings built a world that heated itself. No wires, no switches, just the physics of patience and the wisdom of those who listened to the cold instead of fighting it. Every wall, every floor, every blanket was part of one silent system, a network of warmth made by hands and time. They didn't need electricity to survive the freeze. They just understood how to trap store and share heat. And today, if you learn the same rhythm, you can too. You can hold warmth through a blackout. 
You can keep a cabin, a tent, or a home alive without burning more fuel. Because the secret isn't the fire, it's what you do after it burns low. The embers still whisper their lessons through turf walls, through smoked wool, through every breath of ancient heat. They remind us that warmth isn't built by machines, it's remembered by people. So tonight, as the wind hums outside your window, remember this, they didn't chase comfort, they created it. And in the next chapter, we'll find out why some Viking stone houses still hold their heat after 900 winters, still warm, still waiting.